I'm very happy and proud to introduce our guest today. Dean Stephen Bosworth is Dean of the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University in Medford, Massachusetts. He is also President Barack Obama's special representative for the North Korean conflict issue? Policy. Policy. Um, he is also, and I'm very proud to say, he is also a member of the Honorary Board of the Civilitas Foundation and a friend of Armenia uh, for a long time. Uh, dean Bosworth was the dean who began the special certificate program that our diplomats and other mid-level government and other professionals benefit from. Uh, going to Fletcher for a six-month program, six month. specially devised, uh, after which they come back with all of the benefits of American Academia Plus. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, Dean Bosworth, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Nice to uh, be here. I should also say Dean Bosworth is Ambassador Bosworth. He's been ambassador to the Philippines and South Korea right. in the past. Um, so I, obviously I'm going to ask those questions at the end, but let me start with the questions that are right here at home for sure. us. You know, we on the receiving end of uh, world diplomacy in Armenia and countries like Armenia are always impressed at the, the consistency of the what the, the Russians call the Shkola, the school of diplomacy that stable uh, countries, large countries, Russia, France, the U.S. bring. And that's what we want for our diplomats. And I think that that's why a program such as this that Aso Tavitian has sponsored all these years is so important. What do you at the receiving end of diplomacy uh, think about programs such as these? Well, I think they're very useful, very important, particularly for countries in the position of a country like Armenia where you have not been independent for all, all that many years. You have not had the opportunity yet to build a fully functioning, completely independent foreign service, although you're well on your way to doing that. So I think for countries like this, uh, the opportunity to send uh, young professionals to a school like the Fletcher School, and not just re receive tr professional training, but also receive a world view Absolutely. which is not tied exclusively to your own place in the world and that I think is probably the most important thing we try to give to the uh, students from Armenia who come to Fletcher. And I would think that the other thing that they come back with that's extremely valuable is to see how we're perceived. Yes because uh, none of us really know how we're perceived until we go someplace else. It's been very important for us that this program exists, and I know that Fletcher now has similar programs for um, other countries as well, including our neighbor? Uh, not yet with your neighbor, no. Uh, I'm not sure we'll do that, although we have provided some technical advice to one of your neighbors in the creation of their Institute of Foreign Affairs, a foreign affairs training institute that they're setting up. This is the Azerbaijan Diplomatic Azerbaijan, Academy yes, we're talking yes. about. What is it that when you receive students from countries such as ours, Ar Armenia specifically, mm -hmm. that, uh, that adds to the environment at Fletcher, and what is it that you wish there was more of? Well, I think in the case of Fletcher, one of our great strengths is the diversity of the student body. So we have students at Fletcher in any given year from more than 60 countries. But to have a group of students, 15 in this case, from a country like Armenia, who are present there for six months interacting with other students, um, creates a, a, another layer of, of that diversity. I always maintain that it, while we have an excellent faculty, in fact, our students probably learn more from each other than they do from the faculty. You know, one of the, the problems in, Amer in Armenian higher education that more and more in academia talk about is that the tradition of learning is not uh, compatible with the expectations of Western higher education. Did I say that politely enough? You I know, think the critical that's very thinking, yeah. the writing skills, yeah. the ethics even. Do you find that that's a problem? It's never really been a problem with the students from Armenia, although one of the things that I think we give them or they gained from the Fletcher experience is the development of what I would call critical thinking. There is a tendency in many educational systems around the world for students to sit passively, accept and absorb the opinions of their, their faculty, their professors, and then incorporate those opinions within themselves and move on. Uh, in the American tradition, uh, nothing is accepted uncritically. And I think that the Armenian students with whom I've spoken about this are first kind of befuddled by this practice of being so critical of one's professors, but in the end become very, 
very committed to the practice. So I don't know what happens to them when they come back here, uh, but I hope that they instill some of that critical thinking, those who are also professors or, or in their own professions. Well, I've learned in the media world that unless the editor demands it, all the training in the outside world does no good. So unless their bosses and supervisors and department heads demand it, it, it kind of gets lost. Um, let's switch hats and, sure. and let me ask you if I can about your tough job. I don't know why they didn't give you an easy one. Um, and I know that as far as our region and our conflict go, everybody's bottom line always comes back to political will, that if the sides, especially the leadership on the two sides, really want something to move forward, really it comes down to political will. Isn't it really the same there as well? If they want to come back to the table, they will? Well, they will come back to the table when they perceive that that's in their interest, yes. Uh, it's a little different in the case of North Korea because this is not a regime that even pretends to reflect the interests of its own people. This is a regime dedicated to its own survival, and they will do what is necessary to make that happen or to give themselves a chance of surviving. We actually are beginning to engage with them a little bit more directly now, and uh, I had a meeting with, uh, with them in New York at the end of July, and I suspect there may be another meeting sometime in the next few weeks. The objective, of course, would be to get them back into the multilateral process, the so-called six-party process. Um, and hopefully that then will lead to effective action on denuclearization, uh, the lowering of tensions, the bringing about of conditions which will promote stability on the Korean Peninsula, which is our real objective. And this is a question that also parallels ours. The multilateral approach is useful. But difficult, complicated. Uh, because, well, we all have a common interest, which is that North Korea should not become a permanent nuclear weapons state. We also have other interests, each of us, and those interests are not identical. Uh, our interest in the future of North Korea, for example, is not the same as China's interest in the future of North Korea. And neither of us has the same interest as South Korea. So we you have to address this common interest of denuclearization, but recognize that you have to do so within a framework which takes account of the fact that each of us has other different interests with regard to that difficult little country. Your very calm and rational explanation is appreciated. We wish you a whole lot of luck and patience because obviously what happens there will affect us even in this region. It will, yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for continuing to be a friend of the foundation, the country. Delighted to be here. Thank you.